Here we go. Welcome everyone. Hi there. I'm Megan O'Toole and this is the second episode of Finger Lakes Gives Live. And I am coming to you tonight from the beautiful West End Gallery on Market Street in Corning. 43 years they've been in our community representing over 50 local and regional artists. They really they help and they help so much. And I just, I, she left me a little note, Jesse Gardner, co-owner, and she just wants everybody to know we've weathered many, many storms over the years. And this is yet another opportunity for us to all unite and come back stronger than ever together. As the West End Gallery is a privately owned gallery representing 50 artists that depend on us for their livelihood. So, I just am excited to welcome you guys all back. And I first wanted to start with, and she uh, brought that up. Thank you to everyone who viewed last week and who gave. We raised $1,200 for over 29 local organizations by going to flxgives.org. So tonight, if you're feeling connected and uplifted, as I hope you are, you will um, go over after the broadcast and see all of our local nonprofits right there and you can choose um, who you would like to support this week. If you're looking to support artists who are struggling and out of work, uh, they are uh, go to the Arts Council of the Southern Finger Lakes and give to the Emergency Art Fund. So um, I just want to say thank you guys so much. And uh, last week was a giant dose of hope for me and for many of you, I think, who called me uh, and, and expressed the same. <sighs> and, you know, creative forces are, are what make a community vibrant. So no wonder we're so vibrant here, because uh, we are a region and a city with innovation in our bones. Um, and now we're up, we're on deck, and here we are in the Finger Lakes. And it's not easy, but I really honestly think we're gonna be great because we're in the hope of how. That's how artists, creatives, entrepreneurs, engineers, and inventors say, how do we rise out of this? And it's hard, this is a new way. We're, we're walking in this strange new world, this strange normal of new normal, all a loss and the uncertainty, uncertainty but uh, together we can figure out how. And we're gonna adapt and shift and transform because that's what we do, especially as artists, we, we live in that how. So I will put it in local terms. This week I flipped the switch from copper to fiber in my psyche. <laughs> yeah, I was struggling and frustrated through all the copper and you know, there's loss and there's uh, no picture. And now I realize after being with you last week that we have this innovation, this fiber of creativity in our bones here. So let's create the space together every week, I hope, where we play, come together and create hope. So with no further ado, let's do that. I bet you wanna know who we've got tonight. Maybe you saw. Uh, I'm really excited to introduce our special guest this week. And we have artist and educator, Bridget, Bosart Van Otterloo with a studio visit. There she is. <laughs> Karen <Hello>. Dusek. Hi. <laughs> um, our Orchestra of the Southern Finger Lakes Managing Director. Hey there. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> and we also have our, our their principal harpist and educator, Dr. Rosanna Moore, coming to us from Rochester, New York tonight. Hey, Hi, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. You know, we're making it work. It's good. Um, and then Mitchell Hurricane Smith is with us from 171 Cedar Arts. He's the marketing and development manager. He's also current treasurer of Elmira Little Theater's board, an organization very close to my heart, They're who, direct, who introduced me to the arts community when I moved here. And then also we have our poet tonight, Tamar Samuel Siegel. She's a poet and educator. Hi, Tamar. Uh, it's hey, awesome great to, to be you. here. <laughs> okay, good too. And you guys are out here. I see Amy Bush on my screen. Hey, girl. So <laughs> what's in your glass, everybody? <laughs> Tamar, you can tell me later. <laughs> this is, um, I have a quarantini. So that is Finger Lakes Harvest 
elderberry syrup and four fights distilling right here in Corning, their Crystal City Vodka in this gorgeous hand-blown glass by David Buck. So a little seltzer, cheers to everybody. Um, tell me who you've got in your glass at any time. Don't run away and make a drink though, not yet. So you had to be uh, ready. <laughs> so um, now we are going to go back and yeah, I'm trying to see this. Sorry, guys. Oh, she's got water. Amy. <laughs> That's okay. We'll toast together afterwards. And um, I think, I don't, not sure if they're ready or not for our wonderful first guest. We're going to take a, a trip to the artist studio of Bridget Bosart Van Otterloo in Corning, and she's going to show us around. Yay, Finger Lakes Harp. there Bridget I, I want to be there Hi. oh you are yes. in the most beautiful space and it it represents your beautiful light you know you have a you have a wonderful peaceful presence so thank you for that and a little tour of, of your home studio yep it's my studio is in my home here in Corning New York yep it's a very peaceful place I love I love being here and working here and so is this where you normally work so it, in that sense you didn't have to adjust to the shutdown yep. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. but in other ways, did you have some adjustments? Yes, I, I do a lot of teaching. So I've moved my classes online. I've been offering virtual workshops and I have another one coming up on May 24th on a Sunday afternoon. Um, I used to be able to host people here in my studio for workshops and oh, private classes. Yeah. So I've moved mm -hmm. those online and it, so far it's working pretty well. Yeah, how is it? Do you? I mean, I actually feel yeah. more connection than I thought I would. <laughs> yeah, it's so. interesting. Like, there are some advantages to doing it online. I had someone join my class from North Carolina who used to live here, and she was just really happy to be able to take a class again. So, you know, those kind of advantages now. Those are the, that's the kind of endless, you know, bandwidth opportunity that you, we have. I think there, there were barriers and certainly there's loss, but then there's things like that. And so yeah. that's just so, that's so good to hear. So tell me a little yeah. bit about, I think I see a uh, palette over there yeah. and a very special event. Will you tell us a bit yeah. about it? Behind me here, I have I, my palette in progress for this year's Palettes of Cuca Lake. And this is mm -hmm. one show that is going to stay the same because the palettes are located outside around Cuca Lake. So you yeah. can um, download a map and then drive around a be the beautiful lake and see them outside of wineries and businesses. And that is, um, they will be out July 1st and be out the whole summer. And then they're auctioned off the first weekend in September. September. And that's, it's a um, Hammondsport Chamber event, am I right? Yes, yep, it's organized by the Hammondsport Chamber of Commerce and it benefits them and the artists who participate. That chamber works so hard in the tiniest town. I mean, they always have something they going on. There's, again, so many just wonderful movers and shakers always making yeah. it happen. So such good news. We're gonna be able to go out and still pretty much do the same thing, thing, is still thing normal, maybe yes. 
<laughs> yeah, once ah, that yep. rings like, oh, yay. And I can see there's a moon there, and I'm thinking it might be a yeah. lake, uh, but you don't have to give it all away. <laughs> You'll have to You're wait. Ready to. If, you, if you follow my, um, my Instagram and my Facebook page, you can see mm -hmm. progress photos as it goes along. Oh. That's so much fun. And um, Bridge is going to upload all that stuff in the live chat when we're done here. But I know also that's not the only thing you're doing. You have another great event um, at the local 171 Cedar Arts Center you want to tell us about? We have oh the God, kaleidoscope. Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this is a painting. These are quince blossoms on um, gold leaf. And so the annual fundraiser for 171 is the kaleidoscope mosaic event. And um, this year, it's going to be online in June with uh, just one piece from each artist and then other packages that all the auction benefits 171. And then I think there'll, there'll be an exhibit, in-person exhibit in the fall. So a lot of exhibits are the in-person version is moved to the fall, but a lot of them are still happening virtually right now. So that's one oh, panel. I'm, I'm going to be, uh, I'm working on 16 panels for these. These are the daffodils. Wow. Wow. And now you're telling me that we've already flying through our time, but how much just to make one panel? How long does that take you? It depends on the piece. Uh, the, the metal leaf pieces take a lot more time. There's a lot of delicate work uh, painting around and over that metal leaf. So they're all, it depends. Every piece is different. It really depends. Wow. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And I'm glad to know that we can still connect with you and still learn from you. Um, I'm hoping maybe we I booked you for some plein air workshops uh, in the wine country. Yeah. Maybe those will still happen because they get social distance. Yes. But um, put everything up on our live chat. I see people shouting you out. And I know they're just uh, as amazed as I am by your work. Yeah. And thank you so much for letting us come to your home and to share with us and uh, let us know how we can stay connected. Yeah, Tell thank you. This has been really fun. Oh, yes, okay. my glass. Um, I have dry Riesling, Dr. Frank's dry Riesling in this beautiful glass by a Corning glass artist, Dan Meyer. And there, I don't know if you could see it that well on the camera, but there's gold um, oh. in the glass when he blows it. And I think you could find these at C in the CMOG store or on wow. his website. Incredible. Yeah. Put all that in the chat. And if they're watching, they can yes, shout it out. Bridget, thank you so, so yeah. much. It's wonderful Thank to you. see you, even in this yeah, way. It's great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. Um, that was so much fun. See, I just don't want to let people go because they're also interesting and I'm so curious and I hope you feel the same way and check out their work. Um, so we actually get to introduce our next guest, which is Karen Dusek with the Orchestra of the Southern Finger Lakes. Karen, are you there? She is their managing director. We said hi earlier. Here we are. Here it goes. How are you? <laughs> hi, Megan. Thank you so much for inviting me to do this. And thank you for what you are doing for our community. This is just wonderful. You and your crew are amazing. Well, we're making it just, you know, here it goes. As I said, it, I really do think it's it's the marrow of our bones. We are this, you know, that's the fiber of this community is creativity and innovation. So let's just tap into it. Um, speaking of which, wow, the orchestra, what are you up against as far as having to adapt with um, the um, new rules and things with the shutdowns and with how to come back? Well, as you know, we can't do any staged productions. We can't do any rehearsals, at least until the phase four opens up in New York. So in the meantime, we have started doing Facebook live concerts, mini concerts. They're about 30 minutes long of our musicians from their homes. And we have wow. one coming up this Sunday at four o'clock. This is May 17th. And it is with our uh, concert master, Augusto Demek, and his wife, who is principal cellist, Christina Lowe Demek. Now, where do we find that make, on your or your Facebook page? Orchestra yes, it, it's, like, it's okay. the OSFL on Facebook. And uh, if you go to osfl.org, there's a link from our homepage to our Facebook page where it will run. Sunday at four, which was the original date for our youth orchestra performance, the youth orchestra and junior string ensemble. But of course, and that's been canceled. To show us, right? Yeah. Oops, sorry. Hold on, Karen. <laughs> <I can't hear you. laughs> 
both of us lost our <laughs> great sorry about that um no i think you have right. some video of some current things because you can't come to us right now and you're trying to figure out masks for musicians on wind instruments it I, may I come to that. all of that Wow. Um, but let's talk about what you are doing. You talked a little bit about that. We'll go to Facebook. We'll check out those things. But I know you brought some video and I'd love you to tell us about what we're seeing. Sure. So the first one here is an excerpt from our last concert. Awesome. We performed on Firebird. March 8th, the Firebird Suite by Stravinsky. And this was the last orchestral piece that we performed before being shut oh. down. <sighs> if you only knew, right? I know. It's, right. Mm. <laughs> right. And, and uh, where were that you was our, mm. That was at the Clemens Center, and our conductor, Toshiyuki Shimada, was conducting that. Yes. And he's so, so, oh, he's such a great presence and, and just makes it all the more interesting and wonderful to be in that space with you. Tell us about, oh, the Amazing Grace clip. So this was from our March concert a year ago, and this was a surprise encore with bagpiper Mark Cushing. And wow. I wanted to include heart. this as, I wanted this to be a little tribute to our frontline workers and everyone who's enduring COVID-19. Karen, thank you so much. Oh, that's so beautiful. I grew up with bagpipes in the house, so uh, it's, it means a lot to me, but wonderful to the frontline workers. Yes. Um, and yes, I think indeed. you have one more you want to share with us. Am I right? Or we were going to talk yes. about that. Mm -hmm. One more um, performed by an amazing, young, talented uh, oh, wow. violinist, Sophia Werner. She won the concerto competition and performed with the orchestra last year. Somebody's saying, wow, they miss live performances. I'm crying about it right now, too, but we're going to get back to that and we're going to stay connected in this way, aren't we? We're figuring it out. I feel like we're coming to even bigger audience for the Orchestra of the Southern Finger Lakes. And if you didn't, you know, get to them before, now is the time. You can help them out at fingerlakesgives.org. Uh, you can go to their Facebook concerts. Um, I'm sure, Karen, do you have something you'd like to talk about that you wanted to direct people to before we introduce um, your special guest? Sure. With Sophia Warner's performance, I'm hoping that will inspire all of our uh, young students who play instruments at home to just practice more at this time. And uh, we are still accepting recorded applications for that concerto competition this year. So right now is the time to make those recordings while you're at home and have that extra time. Send those in and maybe you'll be the next performer with the OSFL next year when we're allowed to do that again. Absolutely. And I think, you know, the students out there and art students, especially, um, we, we need something to look forward to. So practice, send in, <laughs> you've got something you can enter and, um, and we'll be back. And the music in this community has always been so vibrant and connected. So let's talk about that. You have a member of your orchestra who's here with us tonight. Would you like to introduce her? I do. It's my pleasure to introduce a very talented musician and teacher. And uh, she is not only talented in music, but also in technology. Uh, she is the one who introduced us to doing Facebook Live concerts and got us all set up. So that was very, very helpful. Um, <laughs> this, this is our uh, principal harpist, and she's originally from Manchester, England, and I'm so glad that she's here with us during this time instead of being over in England. So this yes, is Rosanna Moore. Okay.
mesmerized how close up they can be which I said the first thing and I saw Brian Stahl out there going I don't think I've ever been this close to a harpist I'm like wait till you meet her because she's even more fun than that so hi Rosie thank you hi how are you <laughs> you know it's we're flying through a little technical difficulty for me in the beginning but here we are we just go with it and that's kind of the fun it feels like live performance it is live performance. exactly it, it's as close as we can get at the moment. And that's one thing that I think as artists, we're really good at. We are really resilient. And because we're creatives, we will always find ways around whatever is happening in the world. So we're in the house, right? We're there. in the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is I it, the comments, you know, it, it just, you know, you brought so much and I can't wait for them to get to know you a little more. Um, so how did you find the harp? Because one doesn't run into them very often. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have two I answers for this. <laughs> I have the quick answer normally at the end of a concert when I'm trying to pack up and go and have my gin and tonic afterwards, uh, which is that it was big and awkward and it meant that nice young gentlemen would hold doors open for me. Um, but the, <laughs> that's not the real reason. Uh, when I um, When I was about five years old, the school that I had started going to, uh, there was a 
teenager in the um, high school ad adjacent to this preschool uh, that brought his harp in. He must have been 16 at the time. And I was this five-year-old sat cross-legged on the front row going, I want to play that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I went home uh, in the evening and went to my mum went, Mum, I want to play the harp. And she said, no, you don't. Don't be stupid. And <laughs> as I think most parents do, I, as a teacher now, I, I find that with a lot of um, my students, their parents will contact me going, what do we do? How do we get this out of their system? I'm like, oh, just wait. <laughs> They'll be hooked for life. <laughs> uh, but I kept pestering uh, for a number of years. And then when I was about nine years old, my dad's job moved and mm -hmm. um uh, that i had to move schools and the school i went to just happened to have a harp program and so my dad was like okay she's been he's she's been talking about this for years she'll give up in six months it'll be fine <laughs> and i didn't <laughs> so I think my dad's going to keep him in his old day. Oh, no. And Karen, I think Karen's going to join us back in just to chat. And I know Karen's glad you didn't. <laughs> and thank you uh, to Rosie's parents, to Rosanna's parents. Oh, yes, always. Um, like, I, I say this to uh, all my students' concerts as well. None of this can happen without the parents. Schlepping a harp around is not the easiest thing on the planet. <laughs> right, right, for sure. So Karen, wow, thank you for telling me. Right when I con contacted you, you were like, and I know exactly who I want to bring. <laughs> and I'm so glad you did. <laughs> and how Rosie long- Rosie does um, a great job. Yeah. And how long has she been with the orchestra? Oh, what's it been, six years? Not quite that long. Uh, I started in 2016, 2016. So- Okay. Um, yeah, and it was my first professional orchestral audition I ever took. So I, I was very grateful, but very surprised that I got it. So. <laughs> well, we are not and surprised I'm very glad in the least. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I can see everyone shouting out love to the Orchestra of the Southern Finger Lakes. Um, I think you have a few harpists who are now born, born <laughs> or yes, that's uh, they can, they're taking over. They can. <laughs> yes. So I have to let you guys go and I wish I didn't, but please, um, when you log off, get on and um, log in any from information you want people to go to. And uh, I really do think we got a lot of fans and please go to fingerlakesgives.org. You can give to the Orchestra of the Southern Finger Lakes and um, our other cultural and nonprofits and Rosie and Karen, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, so thank you for, for having, having us. us. So wonderful. Wow. I don't know. I just, again, I just, I need to have one guest, but we got too uh, rich of a community to do that. So um, even if I did five a week, I would never run out. So um, speaking of which, how about all of you with your art at home? I, um, I asked you last week, I love the Getty Museum Challenge, I think is who first did it, but uh, a lot of the museums are asking you to recreate works of art at home with your own objects and so forth. And I asked you to send them in and um, we have a submission and I think it's gonna come up, but uh, from Rochester, New York, Amy um, Bloom Vandemark sent in this wonderful art at home and i hope she's up in rochester watching and i know they are a um, family of musicians and creative and artists and i just love this and i think we have a slide that's going to tell you because i really i don't know i don't want to um, completely mutilate the name of this painting because portraits portrait of marquesa luisa Cassati with Greyhound by Giovanni Boldini. I hope that's correct. Um, I know that you're looking at the wonderful Amy Bloom and their adopted Greyhound Ace making this. It was taken by family as well. So thank you, Amy. Please, more of you, if you're doing this at home, send it on in. I also, um, would like to talk to you guys about. So my block on Mother's Day, um, we did a chalk gallery on our sidewalks. And so everybody was done by two. And then we just took different term, turns going around the um, 
the neighborhood and looking at all the wonderful um, sidewalk art and uh, hopeful messages. And, you know, again, I was amazed at, wow, we have a ton of artists right there in the block that you wouldn't know about. Um, I think that's going to come up and we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to look at my notes for, um, for the name of my neighbor who gave didn't know she was a sixth grade teacher um, in uh, over in Odessa Montour and uh, she here she goes so she took this, this great TikTok she's getting her dad out there there's the neighborhood walk <laughs> I love this smiles are contagious stomp on COVID happy Mother's Day April distance brings May existence yes so this is just a little bit of the um, art and it was so wonderful. We had like our own mini um, street painting fe festival because we can't wait and hope that Elmira, New York with their wonderful street painting can find, find a way for all of us to come back. Maybe they'll just do random ones around and we'll get to come see them. Maybe they'll like do certain blocks, okay. So send me your art from home. Send me what your community is doing through the arts and culture to lift each other up. And I send it to my uh, email, M-E-G-H-A-N at eArts.org. We'll upload that if it's not already in the chat. And um, really, really, again, it was just so much fun. All the families laughing and giggling. And then we all had a gallery walk in a social distance way. And honestly, I don't know if we would have done that. I got a great block, but again, I met new people just in that beautiful art. So I have next the amazing Mitchell Hurricane Smith <laughs> is coming in, I believe, to the shot to come talk about what he is doing incredible in the community, which he does a lot because he works for 171 and he also uh, is the treasurer at Elmira Little Theater. Hello. Hello. How are you, I Mitchell? I know. Here we are. It <laughs> happened. Yes. yes. <laughs> Mitchell, it's so great to see you. And, um, you know, you really have had such a hip impact. And I always say, you know, that hurricane impact uh, on this community in like the three short years you've been here since Texas, uh, you moved from Texas. Um, and yes. you, inspiration <laughs> to me as a theater person and director, uh, artist, have started um Zoom matinee. Tell us about that. Yeah, so both for work and for Elmira Little Theater, I started thinking, how do we continue to engage patrons um, when we can't have them in our building? And um, especially for a theater, when you can't have them come see the shows that you usually spend months preparing. Um, and so I thought about how do we create an online live broadcast presentation? Um, and um, I worked with a friend of mine, Angela Daniels. I even talked to you a little bit about it there at the beginning about how, you know, how do we continue to make live theater and continue to entertain um, our patrons, especially in, in this time when, you know, we need the entertainment more than ever. And being able to see a local familiar face just helps come. Yeah. It's just very comforting. Um, so that Absolutely. first clip was actually from a show where we discussed Shakespeare um, and involved uh, Mary Guzzi it from was great. Community yeah. College. Um, and then the clip we're watching here is actually a show called A Matter of Husbands. Um, it was a, sh a show written in 1912, if I remember co correctly. Um, and in fact, all the shows we're doing are early 20th century because they all are um, royalty free. So we are able to produce them online without any repercussions. Um, and here we have Gigi another thing Alvarez we have playing. to jump. Yes. Yeah, um, who some, some people might recognize from the Rockwell Museum, where she was the um, education director for several years and was um, key for creating the uh, gallery, uh, Alley Art Project, which are the murals that they do with the um, high school, the yeah, at risk I want to high school that students. For sure. Right. Yeah. It's so wonderful. And Gigi is so wonderful. And, and both of these were a lot of fun to watch. And they're up on the YouTube channel, um, which yeah, you'll so upload if, if it's not already uploaded. <laughs> yeah. So if you're, if you're <laughs> probably on YouTube right now, once once we finish here, just look up um, 
Zoom matinee or even 171 Cedar Arts. Um, you can see those two shows. Plus, we just finished our third show this past Sunday. Um, all the shows are Sunday at 2 p.m., like a matinee. Um, the last exactly. the show we just did was called <laughs> um, An Open Door and featured um, Alex Dell, who's also on the board at ELT, um, and then a friend of mine, Melissa Neufer, who I worked with over in Watkins Glen um, in Legally Blonde this past fall. So. And you know what's so fun, I thought, is, you know, part of this is letting people know what goes on, you know, behind the scenes. People are curious, you know, how do you do this? I just recently taught a, an acting class and they're like, I just came because I don't know how you do this. And I'm like, great. And I love that you started this last Sunday with you called places and we saw the actors in places, you know, putting on makeup and things like that. So, again, you're finding the how to make it engaging and and almost a broader and more intimate look, like we just had an intimate look at a harpist, you know? Um, yeah. So, and, and it's definitely important in the entertainment value, but as an artist myself, as an actor, um, I was really crushed knowing that an outlet was gonna be taken away from me. And I have to say that the people that I've reached out to be part of were a little bit hesitant at first, but you know, we, <laughs> yeah. um, do our first read through on a, just a Zoom call. Um, and basically, as soon as they sit down to start reading the script, they're like, oh, I can do this. This is, this is what I do usually, and just not with you in person. It's online now, which is what our lives are. So, Right, but we're finding that how. And thank you, Mitchell, so much. And again, um, please go check out Zoom Matinee. And, um, you know, again, here's my normal so size can of oh, beer. Oh, I haven't been I... able to talk about everybody's glass because we've been running along. So yes, he's got, oh, hand and foot, shout out. Yes. Hand and foot. Yes, every Growler. Tuesday, look for them on Instagram and they'll put an announcement that they're selling their growlers. Um, I picked up three today. So yeah. Hey, um, cheers. <laughs> Right, quarantini to you. All right. <laughs> I can't believe we are already at the point of poetry. I'm going to take a sip. Mm. because uh, I didn't want to cough. <laughs> so tonight we have um, Tamar Samuel Siegel, who has uh, graciously accepted to be our poetry moment. Tamar, welcome. Strangers. This morning, I watch from the window as two people I know walk past each other unaware that they are connected. I imagine how it would be if I were nearer, if I could rush from this distance to where they are, bring my love for each of them closer. Their faces would soften and they would not look past one another, but let their eyes glisten with sudden recognition, discovering their kinship. This morning, I empathize with God, who knows us all and waits for us to recognize one another. Oh, Tamar, that was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that and for coming. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for having me. I've just been like sitting here taking in all of the amazing that you've had on the program so far this evening. So I feel like I'm in extremely good company. Oh, my goodness. You I, and, and we with you. And thank you for kind of wrapping all of that up. And that's why I think we should end with poetry in that way. Um, and you know, we have very little to go over it, but I know you were living here for a long time and um, you wanted to talk about a certain poet in the area, I believe. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm part of a really amazing community of Southern Finger Lakes poets, um, and I'm grateful to remain a part of that community despite now living at a, a far off distance here in, in New Jersey. Um, but I'm, I'm grateful to stay connected and I'm looking forward to rejoining the community virtually, it looks like, um, in July through an event that's co-hosted by the uh, Arts Council of the Southern Finger Lakes and Michael Zarnecki's Foothills Publishing and still graciously supported by poets and writers. Um, so that's a, that's an event that will, that there's actually an event this evening and then there will be another one in July where I'll be featured and I'll be excited to see hopefully some of your audience back for some more poetry. 
100% and let us know and we'll we'll post it and I know FLX calendar will post it so we have such this amazing community Tamara I could talk with you forever I can't believe I'm running to the end please get on the chat and tell people where they can find you and your work and um, what's in your glass and who you're wearing because you're special <laughs> and um <laughs> yeah those vessels <laughs> yes there, there we, we are. go Brody Rosner okay. and a little bit of old school corning wear <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. You're wonderful. I look forward to connecting you with you online. Please tell us how we can, okay? And I know you're Absolutely. a teacher. Thanks for all you're doing. Oh, thank you. Good night, Tamar. Oh my, yeah. That went so fast. So um, happy Mother's Day. And uh, you just saw, if you don't know, that's my mom's name, Jean, coming across the screen. And um, she's 91 this month and in California. And um, we're keeping her very safe and quarantined at home. That's a picture of her watching our broadcast last week with Shaggy. Got to say Shaggy. Um, and I hope he's just as interested right now, Mom. And I know that we're distanced, but you're not alone. I just have a little surprise for you. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day from your first and favorite son. Oh, hi, Grandma. I love you. I love you, Grandma. Love you, Mom. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. I love you, Mom. We, we love, love you, you Grandma. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Grandma Jean. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Grandma. Love you, Grandma. Hey, Mom. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. I love you, Mom. Love you, Jamie. Love. love you, Grandma. Love you, Grandma Jean. I love you, Grandma Jean. Love you, Grandma Jean. We, we love, love you, Jean Rita. Rita. We love, love you, you, Grandma. I love you, Mom. Love you, Jean. I love you, Grandma. I love you, Grandma. I love you, Grandma. <laughs> Thank you. And it's true. This cake is big in our family. So mom, I hope that you're smiling and um, that you're just thrilled. She, my mom's the mother of eight, grandmother of 15 and great grandmother of five great grandchildren. And it's just a grand human. And I have to say that I am very proud to be my mother's daughter. Happy birthday, mom. I love you so much. So um, here we are. And we've spent our time of this creating this space of how and hope together. And I want to remind everyone, you can go to flxgives.org um, right after, and you can donate to our local nonprofits and all the cultural organizations and artists you saw today who are get help and programming through those uh, organizations. Please, if you can, it really, it helps to help. It, it helps us move forward and feel better. And, um, if you can and like, like what we're doing here, could you please subscribe and like, please, please. And, um, and let us know what you think and share and uh, let everybody else fall in love with the Finger Lakes. If you aren't already, obviously we can just deepen that love and we can share it even broader now because we, we have open borders out here in this broad, you know, new world, I guess. So thank you. Thanks for sharing this beautiful space and for creating the, the how. We're going to do this, okay? Hey, I'll see you next week. Make some art and send it to me.